Well, good morning, New Life. We're so glad that you're joining us uh, today. And uh, we feel like we've got something for you. We feel like uh, God's going to do something with you this morning. And, uh, and so we hope that, uh, as always, that you would join us in asking God to have open ears, open eyes, and, uh, and hearts that are open to what God is wanting for all of us. So this morning, um, as usual, let's not, let's not enter into worship lazily. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and stand up or kneel in your uh, living room or wherever you're at. Um, let's, uh, let's give God praise in the way that he deserves it. So join me right now. I'm going to pray for us and, uh, and then let's go ahead and, uh, and, and worship. Lord Jesus, we love you. And we thank you for all that you have done for us. We come to you right now and we, we honor you, Lord. We ask that this time of worship would be for you would be pleasing to you. Um, I ask, Lord, for all those who are watching right now that you would be with them, that you would uh, open their eyes, Lord God, to more of you. I ask that uh, in this time, Lord, that we would not leave the same. And um, Lord God, that we would, that we would uh, just bring you honor, Lord God. We love you, Jesus, and in your name we pray. Amen. And I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures the fame I never know And you came along And put me back together Every desire is now satisfied Hearing your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Nothing is better than you And I'm not afraid Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. He's the God of the mountain, He's the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Turn morning to dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one who can You're the only one who can You're the only one who can, the one who can. Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord. There's 
there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Hey, New Life Church, good morning. Uh, I am so happy to be here with you guys uh, at church online. So that's awesome. My name is Casey and I just finished writing this brand new book. It's called Be Like Jesus and uh, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and BeLikeJesusBook.com and I'm gonna be sharing a little bit from the book today just to encourage you in your walk and, and in your journey to be like Jesus. See, I believe that Be Like Jesus is our purpose. It's not just my purpose. It's not just Pastor CJ's purpose. It's not just uh, it's not just uh, Blake's purpose. It's it's our purpose. It is all of our purpose to be like Jesus. That's the goal. And so, how do we be like Jesus? Because that's kind of the difficult part. You know, if I were, if I were to ask you, what does it look like to be like Jesus? We would come up. You would come up with a bunch of different answers, and I would come up with a bunch of different answers. But you know, Ephesians 5, 1 says something. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. So the first thing I want to point out to you when we want to be like Jesus is that, that that's what we're doing. We're trying to imitate God. We want to do what he did. And not just what he did, but we want to know why he did what he did. And hopefully if we can transform our hearts into becoming more like Christ, then our actions will follow. Secondly, it says, as beloved children. Now that's a key part, because you need to understand that being like Jesus doesn't mean you're perfect and you've got it all together like the grown-up we think we are. No, when God looks at us imitating him, he looks at us as beloved children. Okay, he doesn't look at you like somebody who has it all together. He doesn't look at you and expect you to be perfect. He sees a child growing in the image of Christ. He sees a kid learning to do something. I don't know about you, but I, I didn't get on my bike and just start riding it without training wheels. I had training wheels and then I got to ride my bike. Okay. And that was probably your story too. See, we're never great when we start off, but we get better. We get closer. And that's the same when we try and be like Jesus. So what I kind of want to jump on here with you guys this morning is really just two things uh, to to help you be like Jesus. So go ahead, get out your notebook, uh, get out a pen, a piece of paper, your Bible, and we're going to jump right into, the, into this. The first thing that you need to know is who Jesus is. If we want to be like Jesus, it stands to reason that we ought to know who Jesus is. Who is this Jesus? Who is 
Jesus, that's a great question to ask yourself even right now. Do I know who Jesus is? There's two ways we find out who Jesus is. The first is we spend time with him. See, we spend time with Jesus through prayer, worship, Bible reading. See, I, I don't know about you, but do you read your Bible every day? You know, people often say, you know, God's, God's not really speaking to me, and I don't feel like God's close to me. Maybe it's just time for you to slow down and open up your Bible. Maybe it's time for you to stop what you're doing, take a breath, and pray, and spend time with God. God's a relational God. He wants to spend time with us. But I don't know about you, do you have relationships in your life where the only time you spend with that person is uh, writing letters or reading a book about them or even talking on the phone? It, it, puts, it puts kind of a distance in the relationship. Okay? Now, I know, I know Bob Goff. Right? You might know Bob Goff, too. His book, Love Does, and Everybody Always, uh, and Dream Big, I think, is his new one out. And I know Bob Goff, because I've read about Bob Goff. Right? I've listened to him speak. I've listened to podcasts. I've watched YouTube videos of Bob Goff. Uh, I think I know who Bob Goff is. But my relationship with Bob Goff is distant, because I've never actually done anything with Bob Goff. I've never shook his hand. I've never given him a hug. I, I've never shared a meal with Bob Goff, right? And so a relationship doesn't just take kind of research and time. A relationship takes action, which brings me to the second thing we have to do. We not only have to spend time with him, we need to do things with God. We need to do things with Jesus. You know what that looks like? That looks like while you're praying, saying, all right, Jesus, today, is there anything that you want to do? Have you ever prayed that? Have you ever prayed, Jesus, is there something you want to do today? And then just taking a moment to listen. Maybe we need to do that right now. So just go ahead and with me, just close your eyes and just ask the Lord, Jesus, is there anything that you want to do today? And just take a moment and, and listen. And now maybe something came into your head. Maybe an idea popped into your head, right? Maybe it was something like calling an old friend to encourage them. Maybe it was something like writing a note to somebody or, 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 or buying some, some food for, uh, for, for a family that you know is in need. Maybe it's buying diapers for a, 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 new, a new mother, right? Ask Jesus what it is that he wants to do and then do it. By doing this, what we're doing is spending time with Jesus, but we're, we're also doing things with Jesus. And that is key. Because I know people all the time who say that they have a relationship with Jesus that's shallow, and they tell me they read their Bible, they tell me they pray, but what I ask is, have you done anything recently? Have you done anything together? What does that look like? So whatever Jesus is putting on your heart to do, I want to challenge you in the morning when you wake up. Ask that question. God, what can we do today? So for the purpose of today's message and today's encouragement to you, I want to make it really simple. See, what Jesus did is Jesus made the most of every opportunity. He made the most of every single opportunity. You know, later on in Ephesians 5, it says this. It says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. I don't know about you, but do you feel like the days are evil? <laughs> Right? We're coming up on an election here, and I think more than ever before in our lives, we're looking at the situation surrounding us with the pandemic and with this election that's just terribly divisive. And we're looking at all these different, you know, uh, the, these different pundits and, and uh, journalists who are sharing their, their gloomy perspective on what is to come. And it just seems to me 
like the days are evil. Like never before in my lifetime. The days are evil. What does that mean? It means that the enemy is always at work. So we ought to be always at work as well. We can't take a day off because the days are evil. We can't, we can't take holiday, you know? We don't go on vacations from doing the work of the kingdom because the days are evil. There is always a darkness that needs to be combated with light, and we are always those light bearers. So it's our job to continually walk as Jesus walked. Not as unwise, but as the wise, making the best use of the time, another translation says, making the most of every opportunity, every single opportunity, every day is an opportunity for you to be like Jesus, and boy, does the world need Jesus right now. And you're the one who gets to give the world Jesus. So that's great news. We get to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I call this do good whenever, wherever. Or, do good whenever, wherever. See, Jesus... Jesus modeled this really well. It didn't matter where he was. It didn't matter who he was with. It didn't matter uh, when it was. He did good. And, he, and if you can ask yourself this question, do I do good? Do I do good? It's not like a performance mindset. I'm, I'm, I'm talking good as like a noun, right? Good, good is not like a, you know, uh, a measure of what you're doing. Good is what you're doing. It's not, oh, did I do a good job at that? No, it's, did I do good? Did I do something positive, beneficial? Did I do something good for this, for this broken world? Because the days are evil. In Matthew chapter 15, and you can go ahead and turn it there with me, it says this. It says, and Jesus went from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word, and his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. Now let me just stop there. I want, I want you to picture with me this scene unfolding. Jesus and his disciples are, are gathered together. They're somewhere together. Okay, We don't really know what they're doing or why they're gathered together, but I, I kind of picture this in my mind. I picture that Jesus and his disciples uh, playing euchre, right? So they're sitting there down, they're playing euchre, they're having a cup of coffee, they're having a laugh, they're having a good time, okay? So that's what's happened. Just imagine that. And now this woman comes up and she interrupts. We know she's interrupting. We know she's intruding because the disciples are annoyed. The disciples are annoyed by this woman, and they look at Jesus and go, Jesus, get her out of here, man. Can we not have one moment to ourselves? We're constantly traveling from city to city, from town to town, from village to village, healing the sick and, and, and doing the work, you know, the work of the kingdom. But Jesus, can we just have five minutes to, to not do something? <laughs> you know, to just sit still. Have you ever felt like that? Like, can, we, can I just have five minutes, please? Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right for me to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Praise God. This is a crazy story. Now, I don't know about you, but I've read this story a hundred times. And it wasn't until I was writing this book that I was studying this story more in depth. And I don't even know how I got on this like, topic. I don't even know how I chose this story or what brought it to mind. But the Holy Spirit started speaking to me while I was writing this story. While I was writing it out, while I was retelling it, I started to see it from a different lens. See, I always thought that Jesus was being rude. I always thought, wow, that is not like the Jesus that I know. <laughs> He's being kind of a jerk to this woman. She, oh, 
All Jesus has to do is snap his finger, man, and this woman will get what she wants and she'll, she'll leave. You know, like you can have the best of both worlds. Why are the disciples being such, you know, tightwads about this? And why is Jesus being so rude? That doesn't match, see, that doesn't match the Jesus I know. And I'm not saying that it doesn't match the Jesus I want. I'm saying, you know, because there's a difference. Sometimes Jesus does offensive things. And, and we go, oh, I wish Jesus wouldn't do that. That's the Jesus you want. You know, Jesus does offensive things and sometimes get over it. You know, he's Jesus. But this just didn't, it didn't jive with that. Like, I didn't think that this was a moment where Jesus was being uh, Jesus <laughs> or Christ-like. And see, that's weird because I'm like, all right, the rest of the scripture, it looks like Jesus is more than willing to, to do things like this. You know, in, in, in one story, he actually quotes Isaiah, and he says, this is the whole reason I'm here, right? To cast out devils, to heal the sick, right? He says that. So maybe I'm reading the story wrong. So I started thinking through this story, and I started to realize this, and we can go to the next one. But he did not answer her. And his disciples came and said, send her away, for she is crying out after us. You know what the disciples are doing right there? They're giving an excuse why not to do good. The disciples have an excuse. They have a reason. They have a justification to not do good. Jesus answers, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what I realized is that when you're imagining this, what I could picture is the disciples sitting going, yeah. You tell her, Jesus, yeah. She's intruding. I, he, he, come on. This is a reason why not to do good. Jesus is saying, hey, it's not my responsibility. You're not my responsibility. I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. You're a Canaanite. You're not, sorry, you're not a Jew. So I don't have the responsibility. I don't have the obligation to help you. He's saying that. He gives a reason why not. And the woman responds with faith. Lord, help me. And then he gives another reason why not. He says, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. That's another reason. He's saying, listen, what I have, what I have, again, this is, this is, this is the kingdom of God. This is, this, is, this is what is from God. And you have no part in God. You have no relationship with him. You're not a, you know, a child of God. You're not, Sorry. He gives another reason why not. And the disciples yet again nod. Oh yeah, see, you tell her, Jesus. That's why you shouldn't do this. But what I started to realize was that Jesus wasn't saying these reasons for the woman to teach the woman something. It looks like it. It looks like Jesus is saying these things to teach the woman. These are the two reasons why I shouldn't help you right now. That's what it looks like. But really what Jesus is doing, he's giving these reasons because he's teaching the disciples that there is no justifiable reason to not do good. It's our purpose. So he's looking at the, the woman and he's bringing up the list of why I shouldn't help you. And the disciples are nodding their head going, yeah, that's right. She responds with faith. And then Jesus says, wow, your faith is amazing. You have what you want. Your daughter's been healed right now. That's a crazy story. It's a crazy story. And what Jesus is doing in this story, what I realize is that Jesus isn't just, he, he's not, like I said, he's not trying to teach the woman. He's trying to teach us. He's trying to teach the disciples. And Jesus does this a lot through scripture, actually. It's called, it's called prophetic theater. It, it's something that Old Testament prophets would often do. They would act out situations to show and teach us a lesson. It's like acting out a parable, right? In my book, Be Like Jesus, I talk about this a little more in depth in chapter 11. <clears throat> it's that explanation of the idea, do good wherever, whenever. And I want to read a little something. It's on, it's on page 175. 
It says, Jesus addressed all the reasons the disciples were thinking would justify turning this woman away. They listened to Jesus bring up each reason why not and nodded their heads in agreement. Then the woman responded with faith. The disciples were not ready for Jesus to respond the way he did. They expected Jesus to rebuke the woman and get back to whatever they were doing. But Jesus taught the disciples right then and there what their purpose was, or about their purpose. There to do good, forgetting all the reasons why not to do good, and do good. We can always think of a hundred reasons why not to do something for someone, but the only reason there is only one reason needed to do it. Jesus would. See, despite all the reasons why not to help the woman, Jesus still helped her. And if we really want to be like Jesus, one of the things we have to do is set aside all the excuses, the justifications, the, the reasons why not. And just do it. Just be like Jesus. Well, I'm not perfect. Set it aside. Be like Jesus. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know enough about the Bible yet. Set that aside. Just be like Jesus. See, I, I really don't you know, understand this whole Christian thing. You know, Just set that aside. Be like Jesus. No, you don't understand what they did to me. They really hurt me. Just set it aside. Be like Jesus. They're so difficult to get along with. Just set it aside. Be like Jesus. Why? Because the days are evil. There's a real battle going on between light and dark. And it's our job to do what Jesus did in the very beginning. In Genesis 1, it says, God said, let there be light. If we want to be an imitator of God, if we want to be like Jesus, we bring light into the darkness. We do good whenever, wherever. Let me pray. Lord, Thank you so much this morning for being present with us, God, in our, in our homes, Lord, and allowing us the ability to even watch church online during these incredibly different times. Lord, we know that the days are evil and we know that there is a real enemy out on the prowl seeking who he may devour, God, and we know that we have the responsibility, have the duty, have the obligation to combat that darkness with your light. And so God, I just pray that, that you would encourage everyone watching this this morning, Lord, that you would encourage us to put aside every reason why not and choose daily to be like Jesus. Because we know now more than ever, the world needs Jesus. We thank you and we love you. And in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. All throughout my history Your faithfulness walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your good all over my life All over my life And I see your promises in fulfillment All over my life All over my life Help me remember when I'm weak Fear may come but fear will leave My heart to victory. Oh, you are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness 
all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment, all over my life, all over my life. I see. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. Oh, I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. See the cross, the empty grave. The evidence is endless And all my sin rolled away Because of you, oh Jesus See the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless And all my sin rolled away Because of you, oh Jesus Oh of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life I see the evidence of your goodness all over my all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment All over my life All over my life So why should I those of you who are struggling with fear right now, we're going to take a moment, and we all struggle with fear, but we're going to take a moment, and I just want you to uh, lift those fears up to Jesus. He says, my yoke is light, my way is easy. So let's take him at his, at his word. I'm going to play here for a second, then we're going to come back in, but I want you to take this time, just lift those up to him. Let's not miss this opportunity. Well, I hope that you felt challenged this morning in your walk with God to be more and more like Jesus. And uh, I know for me, just the whole thing of doing good wherever, whenever, 
um, is just a challenging word for me, especially in the season that we're in. I know that we'll have many opportunities this week uh, to do that very thing. And so I hope that you find little ways that you can reach out, that you can love on somebody, that you can be like Jesus uh, for people around you. Um, this morning, we've got a couple things before you tune out. And the first thing is this. Tonight, we would love for you to join us for our worship and prayer uh, night tonight. Child care will be available. Uh, start at 6.30 at the Adrian Armory. It's going to be a great night of just praying for our city, for our nation, for our world, and then just praying for each other. And so if you can make it, we would love for you to join us. It'll be 6.30 to probably around 8 o'clock. And uh, like I said, it's just been great to be together with people singing in one room, worshiping um, a mighty and amazing God. The other thing I wanted to make you aware of too is our women's getaway is coming up December 4th through the 5th. And so if you are interested in that, the spots are limited. And so we need you to get registered. Um, the cost is $25. It's going to be an incredible two days just of getting to be together, um, but also just grow in your walk with God. And so if you're interested in that, go to the, the page, sign up, and uh, we hope that you enjoy it. Uh, this, the other thing I want to say before we leave is we are in this uh, season where we're collecting the shoe boxes uh, to send to kids all throughout the world. And so if you want to be a part of that through Operation Christmas Child, uh, there's two ways you can do that. First, you can pack your own box and your own shoe box. You can go to the store, you can get your kids together, you can get yourself, and you can go pack that box with different things uh, for kids. Um, or you can go online and you can create your own box there as well. And so either way, you can be a part of it. If you're going to be a part of it by packing your own shoe box, we would encourage you to bring that to the, to the Adrian Armory on Sunday, November 15th. That's our collection Sunday. And we will make sure that those boxes get uh, where they need to go. Um, otherwise, that is what's happening right now. Next week, we got an incredible uh, service as well planned for you. John McGuire will be speaking. It's going to be a powerful morning. Um, but this morning before you go, if you want to give, you can do that in a couple ways. You can do it online through our app. You can do it by texting um, or you can give by mail. And so the, all the information is on the screen. And so we hope that you have an incredible day. We hope that you've been blessed. We hope that you've been challenged. And we hope that today um, you will make that kind of your motto is to be like Jesus everywhere always. And so we love you guys. We'll see you back here next week.